Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor crew and I'm super pumped to be introducing this brand new series. We're about to kick off all around the three P's of Plan Produce Profit. Now, the XY team spent a lot of time thinking about what makes a great financial advice offering, a great financial advice business. And what we distilled it down to was that there are three key elements that you need to get right to have any level of success in your financial planning business. The first is about planning and how to plan an epic service proposition that's engaging for the people that you want to work with and compelling to drive real results within your business. The second is about producing and that's about being efficient in your business, streamlining things, maximizing the benefits of technology to uh, run a a scalable and uh, profitable advice service. And then the third is profit, which is all about getting your message out to a bigger market. How do you attract more people into this awesome offer that you're running efficiently and scalably? So I'm taking over over the next 15 episodes. We're going to have 15 advisors, going to be 100% advisors. I've had a bunch of fun with the recordings that I've done so far, the interviews, and, uh, and I've got a few more great ones to come. So I hope you enjoy this series. This episode is proudly sponsored by FE Analytics. Now, a number of XY advisors have already discovered this one-stop, easy-to-use tool that helps with investment research, analysis, portfolio construction, ongoing monitoring, and client reporting. Find out how FE Analytics can help you improve your business process, manage your existing client base, and win new business by contacting Bruce Jenner via bruce.jenner, J-E-N-N-E-R, at financialexpress.net or visit financialexpress.net for more information. Hey guys, the new XY social media platform specifically for financial advice is now live. Available on the App Store, Google Play or at xyadvisor.com. Melissa Brown. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. It's, uh, it's great. Um, we're, we had a little bit of back and forth um, mm. in preparation for this because I'm working on this series which is uh, all about the the three pillars of successful advice business, which mm-hmm. are what uh, we spent a lot of time in the XY advisor group thinking about those. Um, and what we came up with was uh, essentially plan, produce, proper plan, which is how to create a compelling service offer, yep. produce, which is how to run your business efficiently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the last one is profit, which is not necessarily the financial thing, but more about how do you get your message out to the masses and yep. uh, something that you have definitely done amazingly well. So, um, uh, so... Yeah, for anyone that's been under a rock, Melissa uh, <laughs> Brown, Money Bar, AT and T, ATA, ATA, yep, mm-hmm. finances, a, a finance accounting business. Mm-hmm. Um, also, interestingly, a, a kids uh, randomly. Long, I've got preschool. Yes, yeah, long day centers. Um, and author of a bunch of books, including this one, on fucking finances, uh, making you know brashness uh, into the mainstream. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so I have a potty mouth. I'll warn you. I hope that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We, we encourage the swears. So uh, sorry, Mel. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, for uh, why don't you start? Tell us a bit about your background and how mm-hmm. you sort of ended up where you are now. Um, so I studied law from school um, and then quickly realised it wasn't like it was on TV um, and. My dad was an accountant and he said to me, well, accountant's got some law in it. Why don't you move over to that instead? And I kind of feel like I'd let my dad down by not studying law. Uh, So I felt obligated to, okay, I'll just do that because now I'm completely lost. I've no idea what I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And from there I uh, worked for the banks for a while because they paid for my accounting study. Right, yeah. And... uh, Realised very quickly that that wasn't for me. Um, my dad had an accounting firm, so I went and worked for him. Right. Uh, he ended up selling that and eventually I decided to do my own thing, never intending it to be a business. I figured yeah. I'd just have a few ca- uh, clients, do some more study and then figure out what I want to do yeah. in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, the idea that I would end up with an accounting firm if you'd gone back to my 18-year-old self and told me that, 
yeah. I think I would have cried and <laughs> ended up in a ball weeping going, no, no, that can't be my life. Yeah. Um, so at about 33, I realized I had a business. It was fairly profitable, but not really. I was, I'd really bought myself a job. Yeah. And I decided there are a lot of accountants and the one question I kept getting asked was, is this your dad's business? You know, there wasn't a lot of female accountants that owned their own firm. Yeah. So I thought, bugger it, why don't I really embrace that? So I started writing about fashion and business and Mm. tax and tried to mesh it all together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's natural mix. I started wearing whatever the hell I wanted to work, which yeah. sounds, I mean, you're in thongs and a t shirt today. I realise I've got two but... thongs after this. I was, I was walking in from the gym and I thought, holy crap, I've actually got no shoes. Uh, yeah. But I mean, 15 years ago, that was revolutionary. You know, yes. you just looked a particular way, especially yes. in corporate. Um, and so that led to my first book, More Money for Shoes. Yes. Um, Which then caused the Fairfax to ring me and the editor at the time said, so I'm surrounded by a lot of guys in suits and you really seem like a chick. Yeah. Which I'm not really sure what that means. I think you're (laughs) definitely a chick. chick. (laughs) So he said, do you want to come and write for us? Uh, okay. So I started writing a fortnightly column for the Age and the Herald. Okay. Wow. Well, I was going to ask you how that came about. And how yeah. long have you been, have you been doing that? So for I've been doing that for six years now, okay. which wow. was so much fun. Yeah, right. But yeah. that was primarily about money. And I was in a tax and accounting business. Mm. Um, so when RG146 happened a few years yes. ago, I thought, well, okay, rather than just ticking the box, how about I go over and play in that mm. space as well? Because mm-hmm. I just... I don't. I see a lot of people that are not doing it well. Yes. And some people are doing it super well, but the majority, I felt pre-banking Royal Commission that there was a yeah. lot that I felt uncomfortable about. So I wanted to jump in and play. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. And so the your accounting business has been going for 20 years? 15. God, how old am I? Yeah, something like that, 15 years or something I saw, ridiculous. I was looking at LinkedIn. I was like, yeah. I don't look old enough to have been in business <laughs> Thank for you. Uh, years yeah uh but that's that's amazing and yeah, so what is the, in my 20s yeah wow so mm. what does the accounting business look like in terms of like how many mm. people do you have so we've got oh good questions four accountants a few admin staff uh main office in glenbrook in the blue mountains and yes, then a satellite so. office in the city uh-huh. um and we're very much about not just tax but business services so uh-huh. i think um accountants are generally the rock stars of the business world. Yes. We know the numbers. We can help you grow your business, but we're too busy doing tax. Yeah. Uh, so at ATA, we try to help you have a great business mm. and help you with the great tax as well. Okay. Oh, mm. so it's like business coaching type stuff? Kind of. We act as, uh, we'll see it as an external CFO. Okay. So businesses often can't afford that internally. Yes. Um, so we act in that role. Okay. Yeah. And what's the what's your ideal client in the for the accounting business? Someone that wants to grow. So and we'll my people are trained to say, so if you come to us and you say, Wow, well, so my account's real expensive and mine, I'm after someone cheap, we go, That's fantastic. Yeah. HR block is set up for you. Yeah. Go visit them, you know, that's yeah. that's perfect, exactly what you probably need. But we're yeah. about actually helping you grow your business. Yeah. And if you want that help. And if you want help with cloud accounting and being more efficient mm. and understanding your numbers, then we're the people for you. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. And and then so Money Bar is the is the financial, financial advice, advice business. Yeah. And what does that business look like? So that's uh, we're unashamedly XY. So we are pitching an XY. Um, so if a baby boomer came to us and wanted retirement help, we'd say, love that. Yeah. Here's our black book and here's some people you might want to go and talk to. Yes. Um, so And we're really pitched at women because we yep. think that women are often one of the ones that we're an emerging force. Um, <laughs> we're starting to have this incredible spending power um, mm. and an earning power, but I don't think there are, there, and certainly there's more and more now, but not enough people talking to X and Y women to say, hey, rather than waiting for a guy or pressing pause or thinking that because I'm a woman, I'm not a great investor, mm. which the research has actually said is rubbish, um, yes. let's actually have a crack and be our own uh, write our own financial fairy tales. So mm. that's what I'm all about there. Yeah, it's good. We do, we also do in my planning business a lot of work with uh, with females. Yes. I find that because guys are like 
guys are weird as financial planning clients. Like you ask a yeah. guy, what is, what does financial success look like to you? And they say, I want a million dollars or I want X, you know, $150,000 a yeah. year or something. Mm-hmm. Whereas you ask a, a female and they're like, Oh, you know, I just want to have a, you know, be a part where uh, I know where I'm headed and yeah. be confident in what's going on, like yeah. to be in control and yeah. stuff. Uh, for me, I think that's a, I think it's like the guy, the guy sort of wants that, but it's sort of like, I don't know, it's a weird thing that they don't want to say that they want that or. Yeah. Or for them, perhaps it's a, um, they think 150K a year means that. Yeah. So therefore they should go for that. Yes. Whereas potentially if they put that aside, then they can actually get to that in a way that they're Mm. not a wage slave or, or the 150K is actually limiting to them. Yes. So for me with guys, it's about reframing them a little bit. Yeah. Is that really what you want? Or is that just what you've been taught Mm. that you want? Yes. And so do you work with? Male, like obviously, but with some males, yes. do you work with both, like only males? Surprisingly, a yeah. lot. Okay. Uh, so both in the accounting firm and the financial planning firm, yeah. I think because we come across as softer, um, yeah. guides, particularly trades and young professionals, are really attracted to that. Okay. So yeah, yeah. probably half guys. Which okay. Is interesting. Cool. Yeah. And what do you do? What sort of what sort of stuff do you do? Like, what do you deliver in the the money bar business? What's the, what's so the sort lots of strategic plans. So. Uh, we're actually coming to the point where we don't think we want to be doing uh, as much insurance and that sort of thing. So we're partnering with people to offer that. Okay. What we want to do is figure out where are you now, where do you want to go, and if you don't know where you want to go, let's help you figure that out and then work out what the gap is and then a plan to, to minimise that gap. Yeah. And then what I find is there are about 20 different ways that you can fill that gap, but that's the fun and the easy part. Often people just struggle with the, I don't even know what ground zero looks like and I don't yes. want to face it. I don't know where I want to go. Mm. So how can I possibly come up with a plan? They think that financial planning is um, how much of my income should I save? Yeah. But that's an irrelevant question really if yes. you don't know what you want. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It, yeah. Uh, it doesn't, well, I was going to say it doesn't sell books, but maybe, maybe it does. <laughs> Uh, but I first, one of the things I get a bit from from journos, and they're saying yes. like, "What's the what's the what's percent? the percentage?" You know, like, yeah. well, there's no like, you know, zero is okay sometimes, and sometimes yeah. it's not. Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, mm. um, so how many advisors do you have? So there's two of us, um, yeah. and I really don't want to build a professional firm with the money bar. So we're actually looking to do um, on the 21st of October. I'm launching an online course. Um, and we want to move into more education and that piece and helping you do it yourself okay. rather than coming to us for advice. Mm. So I'm very much wanting to partner with advisors where we're doing the education in the strategic piece mm-hmm. and then either having people understand how to do it themselves or yeah. having the knowledge to go away and say, this is actually what I want. Go and execute it, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Mm, okay. I don't want two professional services. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. I, I'd say suck up the punishment. Oh, uh, yeah. No, yeah. staff. It's probably, if I can say one thing, it's the thing that I don't do well is managing people. So yes. the idea of many people just makes me want to run and cry. Yes, so, me too. Yeah. Um, but I find it's a funny thing that you do, you know, this is the challenge I mentioned to you just, just uh, before we kicked off that mm. I'm in this process of firing with trying to build our team and yeah. one of the things with my business coach working through it's that the skill set that you have, like I enjoyed being an advisor and, and giving advice and, you know, yeah. I think I'm pretty good at it and of course I'm biased, but, um, <laughs> but like when, you, when it comes to, to growing the business and then growing the team, it's a totally different Absolutely. skill set and a, yes. and a whole, and it's like I'm starting, it's like you start again from the start. Yeah, and just you having to release it to people and hope that they don't screw it up and they're yeah. going to. Yeah. Um, I know for me with the accounting business, I purposefully don't, don't know how to do a lot of things in the business so mm. that I can't do them. So I'm yes. not on the tools really at all. Yeah. Um, and part of that is because I just simply don't know how. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. it's actually making yourself irrelevant yes. so that you can't do it. Yeah. You know, I I don't know how to um, log into our advisor logic system Okay. Purposefully. Yeah. Right. <laughs> to the frustration of my admin person and Lauren, who's my co-founder. Yeah. Because if I know how to, then I'm likely to be more hands-on. Yeah. So. Have you heard of Blast Pass? I feel like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> 
Oh, very good. And so, you know, you, you've got so three books now. You're, mm. you're doing regular writing, a lot of speaking, yeah. and um, involved with the pretty heavily involved with the Business Chicks Network. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so clearly, you've got a, you've done amazingly well in terms of building a, a, an audience there. Yeah. But how did that? How did it all sort of start? All was it the you mentioned, was it the you mentioned writing? But obviously you've done the book done already. already. Yeah. What, 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 yeah, yeah. How, how did it, how did it, how did it kick off? It was writing. So I felt very stuck in the accounting firm that I built, that where I wore a lot of grey and it was a very traditional accounting yeah. firm and I hated it yeah. and it was pretty much compliance only. Um, and so in order to give me back a bit of creativity, that's when I started just writing but it's a tiny little blog um, where I was trying to figure out if I could fuse these things that I loved, like writing mm. um, and fashion and business. And I uh, started an MBA course. Um, I just started to read books. Um, I went to every learning opportunity I could uh, just so that I could start to figure out what, I, what was I excited about. Mm. Um, and I self-published More Money for Shoes probably about seven years ago, seven, eight years ago, which is nuts. Yeah. And when I did that, it was great to do, but then there was no audience for it other than my accounting firm. Yeah. Because no one knew this little accountant in Western Sydney that yeah. wrote a book. Yeah. Like, so what? Yeah. <laughs> so what I did, because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it, I thought, okay, well, I'll get creative. And I got some gorgeous white glossy shoe boxes, um, put it in with, and I mean, this is how long ago, a CD where it was about me and my firm, um, oh, a little right. brochure to say like this is what CD. it is, like a little uh, audio, yeah. <laughs> it's a little audio CD, but a click thing so that they could go and download some stuff. Right. You know, okay. It's not an internet yeah, link. Yeah. Um, and I had it delivered to 100 journos uh, okay. that I just found and then I hired yeah. a little publicist to help me with. Okay. And it was before people were kind of doing that. Yeah. So these gorgeous white glossy shoe boxes got delivered into these uh, places yeah. where they're a bit serious, they're a bit business-like, but also into places like Cosmo and Clio and yeah. um, places where they're not sending business books. Yeah. Um, and when they opened it, you know, it meant that uh, Cosmo got in touch with me and said, we love this. We won't actually put an extract of the book. Um, we're thinking maybe four to six pages in the mag. Is that okay? Wow. I'm like, oh, let me think about that for a moment. <laughs> yes. um, it meant the age contacted me and said, would you mind writing for us? Yeah. Um, all these ridiculous opportunities. Wow. Because I did something a little bit creative and different. Mm. And I think it's harder to make a noise now because mm. there is so much noise. Yes. But it's still about finding that glossy white shoebox. Mm. and figuring out how can the thing that I've done be seen. Yes. Um, and that's why I called this Unfuck Your Finances and not Big Girl Pants or something like that. Yeah. Because I felt that at that moment it needed to cut through mm. and the way I felt like it would is the wake-up call to, you know, yes. maybe you just need to unfuck your finances. <laughs> uh, but building the audience, that's that's how I did it with those white shoe boxes back in the day, and it really right. has all built from there. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And so, so you started you started doing the writing, and and then that's led into like, how did the other couple of books come about? Yeah. So I I started a. Thinkers Inc., the very first preschool with one of my very good friends about five years ago. So for the next book, because I was immersed in the childcare space, the next book was about uh, 12 financial fairy tales um, that started with well, this, what, this could be what life is, mm. but then here's the alternative ending if you actually did something different. Right. Um, so Sleeping Beauty, uh, Hansel and Gretel, like all these different tales that I made modern day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I self-published that one as well. But to be honest, that one was an ego piece. Yeah. I just really wanted to write that. It got, me right. press. It, it got me into some amazing women's magazines like Harper's Bazaar and Vogue and bucket list ticks for me. Yeah. But that's kind of it. Yeah. Um, so I think for me the learning has been is this an ego thing mm. or is this actually going to help build my brand and is it going to help bring in clients and make a difference? Yeah. Um, and Fab but Broke was definitely something that I did for me that in yeah. hindsight really should have just been an e-book or something like that instead. It was yeah. an expensive test. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's definitely a lot goes into like, n- n- yeah, the financial side of things, but also the time. Absolutely, definitely. And I find the writing process so easy. Yeah. Um, I'm, an intro- I'm super introverted. Um, so for me, sitting behind a computer, not talking to anyone and writing, yeah. it's just my perfect day. Yeah. So I'm really comfortable with that. It's yeah. all the other stuff. That- yeah. It's harder. <laughs> mm. And then so so you've, you've learned then from the from the second book and you, you put out this one. So tell me yes. about the, the, the process and, and how you ended up here because it's an interesting one that you go, well, I'm talking about finances. Does that mean you're going to get people that come to you in a, in a big mess? People, yeah. Like people that are in so much of a mess that it's hard. Like a, help them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that one was an interesting one. So I had written for uh, The Age and the um, – and City Morning Herald for about seven years. I knew what articles had worked by then and which ones uh, people contact you because thanks to Twitter and DMs, people read and instantly contact you either to tell you about uh, grammatical errors or (laughs) even uh, to ask questions about the article. Um, So it was for a Business Chicks Expo and I decided that I would just grab the best of articles, massage them, add some extra, um, the ones that I really knew resonated and package it in a way that I thought would help the audience there. Uh And I thought for business chicks, very much for uh, Gen Y even, a millennial rather than Gen X, I thought that Unfuck Your Finances would really appeal. Yes. So we had a big display with Do You Need... um, And we, on the display, we had unfuck your finances, unfuck your your business, like really brash, bold with it. It went absolutely gangbusters. And as a result, Alan and Unwin contacted me and said, hey, we've seen this go off. Can we have it? Yeah. And I was really surprised because that was not the intention for the book Mm. at all. And I think because I was surprised, I was like, sure, have at it. Yeah. Um, but the incredible part of that is the global reach. So that sold about 13,000 copies now it's, wow. uh, in Australia. Um, it's now in the US. It's in the UK. It's in the Netherlands. Which really? Senior, um, Netherlands? I know. I've seen your book in Dutch. Yeah. So I'm, God, I hope this is right. <laughs> it's a really cool experience. Yeah. Um, but it has definitely, the, the trickle effect into my business has been massive. And yes, there are, I reckon, probably 10% of people that are just beyond, like they're just so screwed, that financially mm. screwed that we have to say, here's a counsellor. Like we yes. can help you, but we can help you by referring you on. Yes. But 90% of people that come to us from the book are, hey, I read your book and I don't think I'm fucked, but I certainly need help. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or I really, I've been following what you said and I'm now in a place where I need help. Or I've tried to help myself, but I just can't. Can you help? Yeah. So it's been a real, it's been an absolute um, game changer for the business in that we haven't had to market as a result. Yeah, awesome. Which is cool. So is this, so you, I assume you, you sort of track, you know, your metrics and where things come from. What's, Absolutely. What's, um, in terms of proportions? What- I would say, so I've got an accounting firm and I expected most of my clients to come from my accounting firm. Um, we didn't sell to them because too many came from the book. Right. So I would say 75% of the clients coming to us are from the book. Wow. Which is extraordinary. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's why the online course, um, because you can only help so many. Yes. And also not everyone can afford you. So yes. for us, it's creating solutions that are at a cheaper price mm. and that you don't have to come and sit with someone. It's that autonomous. I can actually unfuck my finances rather than coming to you for help doing that. Yes. And yeah. do, you do, do you do the advice work yourself? Part and part. So I definitely do some, partly because I wanted to understand the process and I actually really enjoy it. I love creating transformational change. That for yes. me really lights me up. Um, but Lauren, who's a Gen Y advisor mm-hmm. in my firm, that's what she does. She's okay. amazing. Yeah, awesome. Mm. Where do you think people go wrong when it comes to trying to tr- mm. trying to get cut through? I think not understanding who you're talking to. Mm. So for me, who we want to talk to is really clear. Um, so we know where we want to talk to them. We know where they hang out. Um, we know what voice to use to talk to them and what will work with them and what won't. I think people think I need to be on this platform and this platform and speaking here and talking here and writing here. And in the end, people are confused by what you're offering and Mm. what you're all about. Um, Or they think that numbers 
as in the numbers that people see, like on Insta or whatever, are meaningful. But yes. they're actually not. Yes, for sure. And do you do you like do you have an agent or uh, you do it yourself? No. Right. Yeah, I'm. I, look, I'm Scottish background uh, and Hong Kong background, so I'm very fruit. <laughs> right. <laughs> I dare send you twenty percent to someone I can't deal with. Right. I use a PR person three months of the year okay. just to trickle it along and give it a little bit of a bump. Uh-huh. Um, I did. I did think about engaging an agent at at some point, and to be honest, I probably would get more work. Mm. But I'm getting enough work yes. that just comes to me probably somewhat lazily. Yeah. Uh, so maybe in the next year or two, I might consider it. Mm. But the lazy part of me, the um, lazy part of all the work <laughs> to make it all happen at the start. Yeah, yeah that, person. that person. Well, yeah. the. It would mean more speaking gigs and all the rest of it. And whilst I love it, I don't want to just be doing mm. a lot of that. Um, yeah. Because, and again, it's a, it's about knowing your energy. For me, mm. super introverted, the energy it takes from doing that, yes. it's really got to be worth it. So yeah. I don't want to just be earning off that for the sake of earning off that. For sure. I want to be doing it because my audience is there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that makes sense. So I've, I've heard you a uh, I've heard you a few times on Triple J. How did you spend yes. that? How did that come about? Uh, the book. So okay. uh, so Alan and Unwin did some PR at yeah. first. I'd already been on Triple J. I think, uh, I don't know how they found me. I've, I've been on there once, definitely. And then I was on from Alan and Unwin from the book. And they just loved that I uh, that I was just, I guess, real um, yeah. and open and honest. So they just regularly call me back. Um, and they're after, and this is the thing for people to understand, they want people in there that can just talk no BS about money yes. um, and that can just talk openly about this. Mm. Um, so if you're willing to do that and if you let them know you're available, and that's the thing, I don't say no to people at Triple J. Yeah. So when the hack call and say, oh, Mel, um, or, you know, if I get a text to say, are you free on Monday to come into the studio to talk about this? I say yes. Yeah. Because if, like, if you say no to people like that, they'll stop asking and they'll go to the next mm-hmm. person on the list. Yes. Um, and the hacks my, my audience. Absolutely. So, of course, I want to be there. Yeah, that's great. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I think, like, one of the things that I, I see with a lot of people is that, you, like, you see, uh, and I'm sure you have people like this in your, uh, in your networks across social media, that people are trying to get, like, trying to get their message out or set themselves yes. up as an authority in the space and, People, the people are good people and they yes. do good work. But yes. it's, it's a weird thing that people, some, when they start to then uh, put their, put themselves out there, they, it sort of changes their, yeah. their tone. So it's, yeah. I think it's interesting you say that just talk normally. Absolutely. And like be yourself. And, yeah. Uh, and you won't appeal to everyone. So I knew from writing More Money for Shoes that my peers particularly would think I was a little bit of fluff yeah. and that they would just write me off. And that's okay. Some yeah. Do. Well, they're not buying from you. So Absolutely. Yeah. And I also know that pe- some people would think, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, but if it, for me, it meant building a, a multi million dollar business. So, yeah. Who cares? That's it. <laughs> so, for me, it's more important that I'm speaking in a tone that's truthful for me, yeah. but that relates to my audience, then you respect me. I mean, I like it if you respect yeah. me. Yeah, that's um, but that's a byproduct. Yeah. Um, and certainly that's something that I've learned. But it's also figuring out what your mediums are. I've done a bit of TV and I just, there is a social awkwardness to me mm. where I'm a blurter, I'm petrified, I'm going to swear. Yeah. Um, so f- and also I find that people don't buy from TV. Mm. So for me, it's good for ego, it's good for social proof, but radio sells books, radio brings in clients. Mm-hmm. Um, radio, for what I've discovered personally is it, it converts. Yeah. So I'd rather do more of that than have the TV. So it's figuring out what's right for you and where your audience is and what they listen to as well. Yeah, absolutely. I've mm. done a little bit of TV and, and it's terrifying. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you've been on the Today Show on different ones, haven't you? I think I've Sunrise. been, I've been on Sunrise, Sunrise a, yeah. a few times. And, mm. yeah, it's the same. that you just there, uh, yeah, waiting to, to get something wrong. And so what, So talking of mediums, what, what, have you, what have you tried? Is there anything you've tried that hasn't worked as, as well as you, as you thought it was going to? Um, certainly TV for me doesn't convert as much as other yeah, mediums. Yeah. Uh, 
social media for me is always surprising at how well that converts. Mm -hmm. Um, So if I talk my preschool for a moment, Facebook ads are the thing. Um, Mums, uh, and they're often the the purchases. Uh, So we do Facebook ads and that converts our preschool, which we still do uh, buses and signs and all that sort of stuff, but that works there. Um, For ATA and for uh, the Money Bar, Instagram works really well for us. Mm. Um, stories and and um, we're, going, we're about to try TV because we're just finding that our audience is sitting there and they buy on Insta, which I'm really surprised mm. by. Um, but radio is the thing that if I'm on if I'm on radio, I know I'll sell books and I know I'll get right. clients, and that for me has been the surprising one. Mm. Um, yeah. Look, some things are ego, like when we're uh, being in um, being in Vogue, being on in Bazaar, a uh, Harper's Bazaar. That was, and that was the ego thing that I was talking about. I was like, oh, I'm in that for magazine sure. Yeah. for sure. The phone's going to ring, and no. uh, yeah. So I think be be aware that some things are bucket list and ego, but it doesn't yes. mean that it's going to convert. Mm. Um, surprising things for me were. 100 Women of Influence two years ago. So I was one of the 100 Women of Influence. And I have received such a spike in media and mm. um, interest and clients as a result of that. And I was really surprised. I yeah. just didn't think mm. that that would mean anything. Yeah. Um, so going for awards, I think, is more meaningful than not. Yes. Um, and as a hyper competitive person, <laughs> I often don't put myself in for awards because yeah. if, I, if I don't think I can win, well, yes. I don't want to be part of it. Yeah. yeah. But that was a real re- revelation to me that, okay, maybe mm. I should do more of that. I think it's, uh, I think that the thing with awards is, and we've been sort of, uh, you know, going and applying for a few awards, been lucky enough to win a couple. Nice. In, in the last little bit. And I find that a big thing with, with awards is that mm. you're, as long as you don't, um, like you're not a dick when you put it out because some yes. people do it in totally the wrong way. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. when, when, if you're talking about it, it's like you go, well, you know, proud of the business, the team, like the, yes. the, the result. Yeah. And then people are saying, oh, yeah, that is a, actually, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's social proof. That's interesting. Like maybe, you know, someone will look at your profile or they seek you out and they yeah. they want to connect and they're like, yeah, this is interesting. Mm. But then you just, they're constantly like there yeah. and it's like you're, you know, people aren't, they're not ready to buy necessarily. Absolutely. But when it comes yeah. time for them to do that, then yeah. they, they know who to. Absolutely. I'm always surprised when someone comes to us where they might say it was X. But actually, they've also seen A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just X that made them um, at the right place yeah. at the right time. And I'm ready mentally now to deal with that. Mm. So, mm. so we, I, what I did was with the book, I thought, oh, I should create something. So I created a little 30 day detox, a super cheap course, mm-hmm. just off the back of the book, and people buy that a couple of times a week. But I've never really pushed it. Yeah. Um, but I also knew that what I wanted to offer wasn't quite that. Mm-hmm. So the one that's coming out in October is a really beautiful deep dive into both what I think about money, so my money mm-hmm. story, my relationship with money, my money type, mm-hmm. um, but then some strategy pieces. So you actually get to DIY your own strategic plan okay. um, and figure out what your gap is and how to close that and then a knowledge piece at the end. So it's this really mm-hmm. meaty thing right. that is very much a DIY, DIY yeah. piece. Uh-huh. Yeah, and yeah. totally because I want to give people the tools that they can do them, this themselves mm. rather than having to come to us. And then when they want to invest, they can either do that themselves or come to someone like yourself and say, so, ready to invest now. Yeah. And I'm thinking index funds or I'm thinking this because I'm a little bit more savvy than if I just walked yes. off the street to For you. For sure. So. So uh, our beautiful spreadsheet that we've created. Uh, So we've got some templates and spreadsheets and all sorts of stuff and videos and tools uh, where we show people how to do it. We use real life examples right? um, and Q and A's and all sorts of stuff. So it's really, really meaty. Yeah. Yeah. I found that that's a big, like you can, there's a lot of, well, there there are more and more people doing education online, but Mm. that, uh, yeah, the ability to help people, to understand the numbers, mm-hmm. which is a big part, I think, of the 
yeah, the, the strategic Absolutely. piece. Like it's hard to, to, to know what that is until you can see. Not that it's the only thing, but until no. you can see that. Yeah, so we talk about ground zero, where you are now, finding what you have and what you owe, finding your income and expenses, then putting that into this piece, figuring out where you want to be. Now, what do those numbers look like? So mm. we say to people, don't be scared. We're going to get into numbers here. But if yeah. we're going to talk money, we kind of have to get into numbers. Yes, that's so, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. And uh, how do you so how do you manage your time between all of these things? Because it's seems- scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm crazy with time. So I have a color coded diary. Yeah. Um, where I know it's in the next twelve months, I kind of know where I'm going to be. I know the days I'm going to be out in the Blue Mountains, the days I'm going to be in the city. I allow space to travel. Already in my diary between now and the end of year is times really set aside for writing and developing mm-hmm. and um, because I'm writing another book at the moment those are set in stone so okay. just cannot put anything else in yeah I put in exercise time like I yeah. just make sure that I ruthlessly manage my diary because if I don't yeah. I can't get done right everything that I want to yeah yeah and then and then layer in the media stuff over the top though right? yeah absolutely so there is space that I put in for mm. if if life turns up um, but, for example, um, I had someone recently that said, so we want to book you for a speaking gig in Brisbane in six weeks. That's great. You're going to have to give us a date now. Yeah. <laughs> and it may or may not work work out. Yeah. Um, but because I managed my time so ruthlessly, I can make those things happen. Yeah. Um, whereas if I allowed everything into my diary, I just wouldn't. I think, I think too many people allow clients to dictate their diary to them or allow their staff to dictate their diary to them. Whereas for me, I allow what I want to do in my life and the the effect that I have dictate Mm. my diary and then everything else figures that uh, everything else works out for the back of that. Yeah. I think it's one of those things that it's easy to fall into the, into that service mentality where it's like you just need to, uh, like that you think that you need to, to fit in necessarily with the clients. And of course you've got to be flexible. We do totally. you know, business working with young professionals and they're yes. all busy execs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, and that's when I started the business, I was more flexible yes. and then, uh, and then just reason. you can afford to be as well. Yes. Mm, yeah. yeah. And, you, and you really want to yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Gotta make push, 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 push. <laughs> uh, but, but at, over time I've sort of wound that back yeah. and, um, most recently, I've had a kid recently, so oh, nice. that's cool. Uh, but that again, t- as a time thing, so yeah. I, I tightened up all my. Now I just do meetings nine to five, and not even yeah. fully that. Like work on Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Friday. So I try to work yeah, on nice. business or do stuff like this. Yeah. Um, and I thought that I would get more pushback, but I think that I think that people know that you know. I think if you train them, um, yeah. so if they know they will be able to get you there. And if, of course, if life happens, they can get you outside of it, mm. um, then they're okay. Because, I mean, I think there is an entitlement expectation happening now where it's becoming harder and harder because people's entitlement expectation is growing and growing and growing. Yes. But for me, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but for me, if you're, this is how I work. And I will absolutely make space for you if you need me. But if you want me on tap 24-7, you need to go somewhere else yes. because that's not how I'm prepared to work. Mm. Um, and just like you, you know, I've, I don't have kids but I've got a marriage and, you know, it's my second marriage and I really want that one to work. So <laughs> <laughs> I quite like him. Yeah. Uh, so I want to make sure that in my diary is space for him because yeah. if I don't, then I, I just don't want to be your business and yeah. your legacy and not have a great relationship. That's so I true. think we need to be really careful with our diary and our time mm. to make sure, you know, we talk to our clients about designing your best life and all the rest of it. But I think a lot of advisors aren't doing that for themselves. Yes. So it's about taking that control. Love it. Mm. Awesome. And so what's what's next? What's up? Well, you, you mentioned so you got another Yeah, so away. I'm madly finishing the online course. It's exciting. Um, Alan and I went on just put pen to paper with another book with them which yeah. is exciting, wow. um, which is uh, all about money types and all the rest of it. So, which, um, yes, madly writing. <laughs> okay. um, and then uh, so the preschool, we're opening another centre um, in Surrey Hills. 
people, I think that the one skill we need, our kids need, is how to think. Mm. And that's what we want to be able to give them through Thinkers Inc. So um, yeah. really cool business. So, yeah, it's more of that. But also uh, next year I really want to have a cut. For me, have three months off um, okay. spread throughout the year. So uh, I had a compressed nerve in my neck this year. So that's really brought back to mm. me the importance of health. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I'm launching some really cool things, but I'm already looking at, well, when am I going to have time off? Awesome. Any mm. uh, specific destinations in mind? Yeah, so Hubby is over in Spain at the moment travelling with our kayakers, so the Australian kayak team, Jess Fox, okay. um, and different ones. Uh, so he's going to be travelling with them next year because it's an Olympic year. Right. So I'll head over and oh, okay. meet him. So, oh, and I really want to go to Oxford or London School of Economics. I thought I might do some study. Okay. At the same time, a bit of a nerd. Awesome. So, that, what a holiday. I know. <laughs> For me, that's the perfect holiday. Go do some study. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, mm. look, I, I know we could talk, we could talk uh, all mm. day, but um, uh, just before we wrap up, I, I've got a couple of, of quick ones for you. Mm. Biggest spooks or stuff up? Oh, God. Um, Ego Project of the second book, definitely. Um, what other stuff up? Probably not having the courage to take a step early enough. Mm. So it's not a stuff up so much a, why did I do that earlier? Mm. Um, particularly if you look across and see other people doing the thing that you said that you wanted to do. So um, not backing myself would be my one of my biggest Awesome. Oopsies. It's I yeah. reckon about fifty um, percent of the people that I've interviewed say for that. this series have oh, said that. So agree. people and not getting rid of people so, uh, earlier. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I I I get I feel very um, emotionally attached to people, or I feel oh, I know you've got kids. I can't let you go. I've got to keep trying. So, yes. Yeah. Hanging on to people too. Mm, long. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. The team thing, which yeah. we were chatting about. Oh yeah. Is, yeah. Top one. So on that, what's your what's your top tip other than buy it fast? Uh, mm. What's your top tip for creating an, an awesome team? Oh God, as someone that doesn't manage people well. Um, so for me, what I do is try, I try to find great systems. So I cast vision so people know where I want to go and they get excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do great uh, blanket approach, so I try to mentor my key people. So spending really quality time with the, that inner sanctum that you just know is vital to your business mm -hmm. um, and those key people. Every business we run Gazelle's Method. So daily huddles, weekly meetings, quarterly um, planning days, annual conferences and the one-page plan. So right. for someone that gets distracted by bright, shiny things <laughs> and doesn't love structure and managing well, yes. that creates structure and keeps my people happy. Right. So. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Um, that's a good one. We just started playing around with the – well, just started using the software or there's, a, there's one that you can actually – it overlays with the, the hedgehog. Um, oh, the thing. hedgehog concept. Yeah. Nice. So it's like it plugs into – Zero, I'll get, the, uh, oh. yeah, I'll get M to put a, a I link. I love that. Um, oh, I'll find that too. <laughs> yeah, we'll put a link in, in the show notes to that one. Um, oh. Very good. Just just that visual yeah. aspect of, uh, of how, nice. yeah, how you, your key metrics are tracking from that. Yeah. The same, the same thing. Awesome. Cool. Mm. Um, uh, uh, best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, my dad once said to me, don't hire a kid. I wish I'd listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> No, best piece of advice. Um, someone once said to me uh, to, because I do a lot of external PR and that this I talk where I'm saying to people this is this is uh, how I think life should be. Mm. They said you need to do internal PR. So for your people that are working for you, they think you're off having lunches and having chats. They don't actually see that as work. So now every meeting, everything that I'm scheduled, um, I make sure my diary is like an internal PR system so that my people know, oh, right, Mel's going and doing all these things for the business. Mm -hmm. So that for me in the last 12 months has been a game changer as far as expectations of my team um, right. and them really being willing to help me. Um, Mm. Yeah. So you mean just so that they know that you're doing, that all the stuff is working towards an objective for Absolutely. the business as opposed to just... Yeah, or I might have um, just put on my diary before chat with Ben Ash for today, whereas now I put 
X, Y podcast, blah, 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 blah. So they look at it and go, oh, right, Mel's doing this. Yeah. So I use my diary as an internal PR yeah. mechanism. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and last one for you, what's your spirit animal? Oh, my God, I forgot that you were going to say this. Um, <laughs> it's going to sound really terrible. I don't know. Probably a cat. A cat. Just the, not that I like cats. But because I think I'm a bit cat-like in my behaviour. Yeah. In that, you know, I'm not a dog where I just want to come and play with everyone. Um, <laughs> come to you when I'm ready. Yes. I'd rather just spend some time on the couch in yeah. the sun with a good book. <laughs> um, yeah, probably a cat. <laughs> very good. Well, Melissa, thank you very much for sure. joining us. Some awesome tips there. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, keep up with good work. And it's, uh, it's always you. great to see uh, you know, great advice really passionate about the future. Uh, well. Yeah, same.